There are so many things that happen every week in Northern California, but all over the country we realize that this week it is the two-year anniversary of the shooting of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. And in the wake of mass shootings in Connecticut and in Colorado, the Obama administration is pushing for new gun safety laws. Right here in California, several lawmakers have already introduced bills regulating firearms and ammunition sales. One of the latest to do so, Assembly Member Nancy Skinner of Berkeley, who sat down with me earlier to explain how her new bill would help curb gun violence. Assembly member Nancy Skinner, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Just this week near Bakersfield, California, Taft High School, another shooting. What could your bill AB48 have done in that situation? Well, the young man who did the shooting had a shotgun that he had to pump. So that's why few people were killed in that incident or shot. If he had used one of these conversion kits and turned his gun into something that could shoot lots of weapons fast, he would have killed many more people. Our bill bans those conversion kits. AB 48, what you are proposing, tell us briefly what you want to do with this bill. Well, right now in California, it's easier to buy bullets than it is to buy cigarettes, alcohol, or even Sudafed cold medicine. And we don't want to make it so easy. We'd like some limits on it. We'd like law enforcement to be able to be alerted if you amass huge amounts of rounds of ammunition the way the shooter in Golden, Colorado did, mm -hmm. or if you're buying it uh, illegally. In other words, if you're the class of person, a convicted felon or certain other classifications where right now you're prohibited supposedly from buying ammunition, but we have no way to enforce it. If we have no way to enforce it, how will this bill roll out? How can it begin to do the job that you want it to do? Well, we have lots of safeguards on guns. You want to buy a gun, you have to go to a licensed dealer, you have to show ID, there's a background check, all those things. Mm -hmm. But anybody can buy bullets anywhere, you don't have to show ID, and the seller doesn't have to be licensed, nor do they have to keep records. So what our bill does, AB 38, 48, excuse me, is to put similar kinds of controls as we do on gun sales. Now the reality is this isn't brand new. I mean, didn't we have things in place? Yes. It then went away, so Across you're just trying to reinstate. Across the entire U.S., we had federal law that existed for over 20 years where if I wanted to sell ammunition, I had to be licensed. If I wanted to buy it, I had to show ID. Records had to be kept, and all those were in place, and then the NRA sponsored legislation in Washington that eliminated that. As we look at what is happening, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, here's a solution. We need to put armed guards in our schools. Your reaction? More guns don't lessen violence. Some critics of your bill have said that, you know, someone on planning an attack, that they could just incrementally buy bullets, amass enough, and still kind of do the same thing. Well, they could, and you know, potentially there'll still be a black market or illegal market on bullets, so certainly we know that any regulation or law we put in won't eliminate all possibilities. But if we could have some hope of law enforcement being able to enforce the prohibitions we now have, or that limit on, if I'm enraged, and I can just on an impulse buy lots of bullets, and then I might act on it, whereas if I had to take a little more time or go out of my way and go to a licensed dealer, maybe I've calmed down in the interim, so maybe I don't, I'm not the situation where I'm a mass shooter. Mm -hmm. So as much as we can try to minimize this kind of uh, the reaction and the ability for people to easily get bullets. You had multiple points. One is that what your bill is doing is really returning uh, the country to a law that had been a national law, two, you want more scrutiny, and then preventing this impulse buy. Yes, That yes. to me is very interesting because that gets into the whole idea of mental illness as well. Right. It's not necessarily only impulse buying, but people who may be mentally ill who have access to guns that right. are legally in their home. Well, and right now we have existing prohibitions on if you've had certain mental health conditions, you're not supposed to be able to buy bullets. But how would the seller of the bullet know that? Because mm -hmm. they don't have to check your ID, there's no records. So at least if we had some of these things in place, if a person who had the kind of background that is prohibited from buying ammunition, law enforcement's able to know and they can intervene. Oftentimes people have said, you know, across the country we could do better if we were orchestrated, if we had um, a way that everybody could know how many bullets are sold, how many guns are out there, but there are backlogs for all of these things. What would AB 48 well, do? Well, we have a registry now. The Department of Justice has a registry of all gun sales. 
This would create a registry of bullet sales the same way we have with gun sales, so law enforcement would have access. A lot of people, when we're talking about gun control, they say, but the Second Amendment says the right to bear arms. You're saying, but the Second Amendment also well, says yes, something else. Well, yes, we do have the right to bear arms, but it also states the words explicitly in the Second Amendment are highly regulated. Assembly Minister Skinner, thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. AB 48, and we will follow. You're welcome. Assembly Member Skinner is just one of many legislators across the country responding to the public outcry over gun violence. So, Josh, I mean, what happens? What do we do? This is going to be an uphill battle. It's definitely going to be an uphill battle. And, and Assemblywoman Skinner is, is among the first to acknowledge that. Uh, there are a lot of people who are, are not so much into that well-regulated militia. It's not actually highly regulated. It's well-regulated. Um, as, as Assemblywoman Skinner uh, would, would have it, I think she's going to have problems not only from the Republican uh, parts of the legislature, but also from suburban and rural Democrats and even po po possibly some other Democrats as well who are just not going to buy into this for fear of the gun lobby, for fear of constituents who are sportsmen who don't believe that this is an effective way of addressing the problem. It's going to be a tough sell. Okay, that is on our state level. On right. the national level, and let me quote Vice President Biden saying, I want to make it clear we are not getting caught up in the notion that unless we can do everything, we're going to do nothing. Does this suggest already that they know that there's going to be a continuing battle on this. They're trying yeah. to put something on the table that says we can have some. Yeah, I think the New York Times article today summed it up pretty well. The White House knows that it's going to be very hard to get an assault weapons ban of, of the kind that Senator Feinstein is proposing through the House of Representatives and through the Senate as well. Um, they don't want to set that as the only possible bar of success. They're going to be looking for other things they can do, uh, perhaps through Congress, perhaps through executive order dealing things dealing uh, with things like importation of weapons from overseas and so on and so forth uh, to, to get something on the scoreboard here as as a, a response that will have some sort of effect on on the gun culture in America. Well, I would like to thank you all very much. As always, the conversation is good. And tonight I'd like to thank my guest and to thank you at home for joining us as well.